Great. I see we have meeting minutes shared. So thank you, whoever sharing them. Mm -hmm. Cool. Let's see. We have enough people here. So yeah, let's get started. So welcome to the next uh, network service mesh meeting. So we have this every week we have this particular meeting. Uh, we have two others which are currently on hiatus, which is the document use case meeting. Uh, we may reconvene them as uh, as uh, needed. We have the CNCF Telecom User Group, which we join in on, which occurs every first Monday at 8 a.m. and every third Monday at 4 a.m. Pacific. And of course, this call, which occurs every Tuesday at 8 a.m. So we have some uh, major events coming up. We have ONS Europe, which is occurring in Antwerp with four accepted talks. We have Open Source Summit in Lyon with one accepted talk by Ivana and Radoslav. We have KubeCon and CognitiveCon in North America in San Diego. And so we have announced Network Service Mesh Con as a day zero event. Uh, please, uh, uh, please register, the, there's limited space. Uh, and there's also a call for proposals. So please, uh, the, the, the most important thing that people can contribute here is going to be content. So talk about please note talk about what you're doing. Friday. Please note the CFP closes this Friday, so get your talk proposals in. Yes. So we also have sponsorships available. So. We also have multiple, I believe the, uh, the agenda has been posted for KubeCon as well. And we have a, a maintainer, uh, we have a maintainer track talk. Uh, yeah, that's the only one that I am on. I don't know if anyone else got anything else accepted. Yeah, no, we, we on the main program, we just had the maintainer talk. Um, okay. The, the, it's getting harder and harder for things to get on the main program. Yeah. So. I, I reckon they have less, my guess is they have less than the 5% acceptance rate at this point. Mm -hmm. So, so. The, my little mm -hmm. math brain just tells me that needs me to get 20 talk submissions in the next time. But. <laughs> <laughs> Taylor, Taylor do, you, do, do you have anything uh, accepted by chance? On... Um, for the KubeCon? Yeah. Uh, well, doing maintainer tracks uh, didn't get accepted on uh, the other ones, like the, we were looking at doing a panel uh -huh. with yeah. Jing Yu and Ian Wong. Okay. It, it might be good if you could add a link to the, because I suspect that, you know, your talk will be of interest to in the NSM community as well, because you guys do a lot of, the, you know, we, there's a lot of good interplay here. If you could add it to the, the yeah, that would be great. Yeah, sure. Cool. Yeah, um, which reminds me, there's also in in ONS Europe, uh, there is the uh, the Tug Meetup, which is going to occur. Um, I believe it's Thursday at eleven forty five a.m. Uh, Antwerp local time. And so, uh, if you're still around on Thursday. Uh, that may be interesting. Uh, that may be an interesting area to to meet up. Um, correct me if I'm wrong with that, Taylor. I, that might be a different meeting, but um, I believe that's what it was. And let's see, we have a social media community team. Uh, so, Lucina, I saw you on the call. Can you, uh, or rather, you have the floor. Good day, thank you. Awesome, uh, so this week I was able to post about, and I'll start backwards, the OVS Orbit podcast. Everything is clickable, so if you have a Twitter account, please feel free to click through on these meeting notes and retweet, like, all that good stuff to um, promote the OVS Twitter podcast that's been published 
there's also an announcement and a reminder of the network service mesh in the CNF testbed session at Open Networking Summit this month. I've also posted for a call for CFPs for Network Service Mesh Con at KubeCon North America. Uh, there was also a post that I retweeted about the CNCF webinar intro to Network Service Mesh that will be on October 2nd. Details on how to RSVP are available in that tweet that's linked in the meeting notes. And I also created a thread for all of the KubeCon sessions that mention Network Service Mesh. That one got a lot of traction. I <laughs> tagged 10 people to that one and then didn't really realize that when I created comments with each session listed, then those 10 people would be tagged again. So <laughs> that was a, um, a learning experience, but it also got a lot of eyes on Network Service Mesh. So um, if you're curious as to which sessions will be at KubeCon North America in November, that tweet is one place you can find those things. And it's also a reference point if we want to copy paste the URLs, dates and times into these meeting notes, we can do so. It's all um, together there. And I also posted a reminder of today's working group session. There was a really good comment from uh, an account that said, look into network service mesh. It has a winning architecture. So I put the link to that really high praise into the meeting notes. So congrats. Yeah. Cool. That's really cool. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. So we have uh, announcements. So CNF testbed, there's an announcement with uh, Nikolai and, uh, and uh, Michael. Um, yeah. <clears throat> so uh, today we had a, another small breakthrough uh, with Michael. Uh, so essentially for the last, uh, I don't know, 10 days, Michael, I don't know. At least a week. Yeah, I think I've been, been working on it more extensively in like just the last couple of days. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. So Michael has been trying to essentially be able to um, uh, inject an external interface uh, and create the so-called gateway, which is not the final story that we want to to show, but it's somehow the beginning of like the... Uh, Precursor to, to 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 have the final solution, I believe. Uh, so we have an end-to-end -end, uh, external host, then going uh, through this gateway through a physical interface into the uh, NSM, and uh, you know you can pass pings back and forth between the external world and the chain of uh, services, packet filter. Uh, the VPP-based client, uh, kernel-based client, and all these things are chained together, and um, it's working. It's something that we want to show in two weeks uh, at Open Networking Summit. One of the examples that we want to show, so we are kind of proud of it. At least I am. <laughs> Michael? Yeah, it's a good step in the right direction. At least it was this. It's I guess it's last minute, but that's that's more the usual, I guess. So, so that's at least good. <laughs> yeah. you, you guys should be proud of it. That's a big step forward. And now we just have to get the hardware Nick stuff working in network service mesh, and we can make it all NSM. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and so, I think just just to add, I guess we're doing a few workarounds right now. I guess it's, it. In particular, the the kernel driver we're loading from the the host, um, and just pretty much having a, a privileged container which can then access it and do using the the DBDK plugin for VPP, we're able to to attach um, VPP to the interface and 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 do whatever we need to do on there. Okay. Yeah. Uh, actually, I'm doing quite the same using Multis. Mm -hmm. It's an alternative, but uh, it's working too. Yeah, and I think we we discussed that briefly today as well. That we probably need to look into to some 
better way of doing it. And I guess there are quite a few options, Multus being at least one of them, where we can we can we can do this in a uh, in a bit of a prettier way than we're doing right now. I think my biggest concern is just we need to have it ready for ONS as well. I mean, one of the things that is coming down is we're starting to get some folks who are interested in taking a look at and doing the hardware. Um, the hardware next off. Um, and I'll, I'll probably go and revisit that spec here and, and pretty it up with a little bit more recent stuff because that'll handle not only uh, how do you get the nick in there, but how do you have something that will call properly in an orderly way the right APIs uh, to set up the, the, the particular VLANs and whatnot correctly for you so that you actually get the network service that you want there. Yeah. So basically bringing proper dynamicity into making sure the Tor switch is offering the right network service to you too. Well, at least for me, this, this, this step is valuable because we kind of, uh, you know, stumbled in some unexpected problems maybe. I know uh, everything about setting uh, DPDK, uh, do you need a privileged container? Uh, how do you isolate a specific device? Because we currently are not really able to do that. Uh, it just maps whatever is out there. So it's it's a bit of a, I don't know, uh, the beginning of the learning curve, I think, at least for me. Um, so yeah, I mean, whatever we have in the higher level specs, uh, it will sure, sure, surely be, be, be able to take uh, you know, a, a advantage of this work in any case. That's my point of view. <clears throat> Yeah, we'd love to have your involvement in um, in the creation of this stuff as well, because uh, you have um, experience setting up and and managing these things, and uh, that's uh, invaluable. Okay, thank you. Oh, let's see, we have the SDK evolution. So. Um, no. uh, it was updated. Taylor is something? next. Taylor ah, Taylor. Is next. Sorry, Taylor. <laughs> my, my apologies. Um, okay, so roll back. Taylor, CNF testbed roadmap. Uh, you have the floor. Yeah. No worries. Um, this is just building on what everyone's talking about. Um, and I can share the, I'll just send the slide via Zoom, I guess. Um, who's, can someone click that if you're sharing? I guess I can add that to the notes as well. Um, as a link, if you can click that and open it up, whoever's sharing. Ivan, can you please click? Yeah, this one. All right. Oh. Um, Okay. Yeah. So um, there's also one in the repo, um, but I, I need to get that one updated with what we did here. Um, it's a little bit off. Um, anyways, so most of the, as you can see, most of the uh, use cases that we're focused on are going to be around NSM uh, for the next couple of months. And what Michael and Nikolai were just talking about is that second one in September, the NSM Physical Net Gateway, that we're planning on using as the example that we talk about, both in a tutorial walkthrough type thing, as well as um, the talk that Nikolai and I are doing. So that's mm -hmm. the, I guess, the big one that we're trying to have ready for ONS. Um, we're also in the middle of refactoring um, a lot of different things in the CNF testbed, including um, like what's listed is about the use cases. We're also working on the provisioning of machines and, and uh, clusters as we're uh, finishing some work on that we're also doing in the CNCF-CI project and switching over we'll be using CubeSpray. But this part is something we probably will see for ONS um, moving towards on at least on the kubernetes side splitting up the use cases into reusable components um, and michael denver and a few of us have been working on this and it's uh, right now on a different branch but uh, 
ideally we're going to at least have the NSM packet filter use case ready uh, by ONS um, in this new setup. And probably if timing is right, then we can also get the this uh, physical NIC gateway use case that we're also working on, depending on where things are. Um, but we think this is going to be a lot nicer for people to contribute and they can come in and work on service chains or CNS or whatever they want and add different pieces. And further on down the line, uh, you can see Dan M's on there. Um, we've had a request to uh, get Dan M into the CNF test bed as well as their, the Nokia CP puller. I've put it further out because I don't know when they have time, uh, but I, I I think by the time we hit November, we'll be able to focus on it. Um, other people, uh, if Nokia is not available. And um, that hybrid Kubernetes OpenSec use case is the one that we were trying to get accepted with um, Nikolai, Yang Yu, and a bunch of other folks. Um, ideally, we can still target getting that up if we can get some OpenStack um, help on a, some of the VPP GP tunnel issues that we're running into. That'd be one of the main things. And that could be a talk that um, would be good at the NSMCon. And we got some others further out, including um, talking to some folks about uh, switching to COLA OpenSec Helm. Um, there's some packet projects and people that are wanting to help on that. And then that the Multis Intel stuff comes from uh, Intel's, they have a container experience kit that Michael's already tested and on packet. So we're hoping to pull some of that stuff in as well. Uh, the last thing, uh, if folks are interested in getting involved, then let me know. Put it pretty far out for January, kind of thinking about Mobile World Congress in Barcelona, which is in February next year, would be a GSM 5G uh, type of use case and um, ideally with NSM um, connecting those and Packet has facilities that are connected to Sprint's 5G network and um, they're willing to work with us to have access to various things. So if, if you're interested, I'd like to talk about that and see if we can uh, put something together. Uh, Taylor? Yes. In that uh, 2020 frame, when you think about 5G Gateway, you're thinking about the UPF? Thinking about what? The UPF mode of 5G? Well, um, I guess I'd say to be determined on what we, um, what we have available to okay. test. So, yeah. I've been talking with Packet a little bit to see some of that, and I think we're going to have um, some conversations with Sprint, probably post ONS. Okay. But if you have some thoughts on something that'd be interesting or doable or what you'd like to see, then let me know. Or any yeah. of these folks. Well, I will, yeah. I will let go the rush of ONS and again, then get rid to NSM, but at KubeCon, maybe we shut, can shut on that. All right. Yeah, that's uh, that's fantastic. So, um, this we we did have a very minor presence at the last uh, uh, at the last uh, mobile mobile world congress. So basically, at the uh, Cisco booth, they had a uh, they had a micro booth there with uh, some people talking about upcoming uh, things that uh, Cisco's been involved with. Uh, but getting it to something where we can actually have some something that's working there, I think would be absolutely fantastic. So I, I'd love to, I'd love to make that happen. Um, so is there anything else we want to talk about on the, uh, on the roadmap? Okay. With that, uh, let's move towards the uh, status of the projects. So, 
Um, for this, I will hand it off to Ed, and Ed can start poking the uh, various people. Yeah, so um, the SDK evolution work finally landed last week. Um, this is not only um, stuff that is going to make it easier to write fragments of your sort of chained pieces of your end network service endpoint, but it also is set up in a way that gives you internal tracing uh, so that you can sort of see the progression through the many pieces as well, which can be very helpful in figuring out what's going on, particularly when you have timing issues on requests. Um, and also is set up in such a way that any logs inside your SDK fragments show up in the spans. So it, it should make things quite a bit easier um, to, to sort of run through the SDK. Now, there is a need there for better docs. Um, and then there's also a, a matter that we need to discuss either now or, or we can discuss it further down around multi-go mod, uh, multi modules in the main repo. Um, one of the problems we're having with the SDK that I think a number of people have hit is the SDK, because it's in the main repo, pulls a bunch of requirements that you don't actually need via Go modules, um, which sort of makes things harder than they have to be. Um, and so we're sort of looking at solutions to that. And the two that have come to mind is it's possible to have multiple Go modules in the same repo, or it's possible we could break the SDK into its own repo. Do folks have thoughts or opinions? Or I know you were hitting some of this, Frederick. Yeah, I'm. My my preference would be to uh, to eventually to do one of two things. The absolute best case scenario would be to convince the uh, the Go team to do some analysis of uh, of of what they we actually need. So in other words, download it and do like a pre compile step. Uh, but I don't think we're going to get that anytime soon. So um, I think that having a um, it, it's the problem is is not the size of it, uh, even though that will be the problem for some. Uh, the biggest problem we're going to run into is that when you pull in something that has a very large number of dependencies, then you're now creating a uh, uh, an, an, a burden on the integration of that library with others, and you're limiting the scope of of what others can upgrade to. Uh, potentially unnecessarily, uh, considering that most of the dependencies there are not being used. So the biggest one that I can think of from the SDK side is the Kubernetes uh, the dependency. So I'm not 100% positive yet, but I don't think that we have, we, I don't think that we have a dependency on the Kubernetes repo within the SDK. And that's by far the, the biggest one that, uh, that we need to jump over. The second thing that happens as well is a uh, problem with GoMod tooling. So uh, GoMod, uh, because of the way that Kubernetes is versioned and released, it's not very GoMod friendly. So you have to put a list of like 15 different replace to actually scope out uh, exact uh, versions. And once you've done that, then it'll, uh, it'll uh, work. Uh, but it basically turns into a magic incantation that feels fragile to me. So I think that these, uh, I think this will go away if we were to split it off. So those are my, those are my primary concerns at, at this point. Yeah, I mean, it's also sort of good hygiene, uh, reducing the scope of dependencies. It makes everything quite a bit easier for folks. Um, so, okay, do, do folks have other thoughts or opinions? I mean. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think that, that we have a lot of, projects already in the same. So for example, our wonderful testing written by Andre. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, should it, should, I think that it should live its own life in a separate repo. We have also AWS and various SDKs for the public clouds there, mm -hmm. uh, which, which are just inherently there because we have scripts uh, and uh, whatever, whatever is needed to do our CI. Uh, and as you said, then, uh, when, it, when someone in, in wants to utilize our SDK, they essentially are depending on AWS, whatever, which uh, <laughs> it's not yeah, great, right? <laughs> by thinking it, Ben, I'm kind of curious. In, in the short term, let's start trying to move some of these some towards Go multi-modules because there's some complications for breaking things into separate repos at this particular moment in time because we're doing some things with API refactoring that make it a little more complicated. 
Um, so particularly around like the multi um, data plane support and the kernels and moving mm -hmm. mechanisms being strings instead of enums. Um, but if we get to multi go modules, then once the API settles down a little bit for v for zero dot two, um, it becomes relatively easy to break these things into separate repos. And I think it makes a lot of sense. Um, plus the, the go module separate go modules will force us to think about the, the interdependencies between pieces of things. Like, so for example, right now, if we were to break the SDK into its own repo, the first thing we discover is that it's pulling the APIs from the main repo. And therefore pulling the, all, we, we would have exactly the same problem. Yeah. Which is something we would identify in the process of going to go multi-modules. Does that make sense? Yeah. So maybe that's the, that's the way to go. Okay, cool. So, <clears throat> Anything else on this before we move on? There's one experiment I'd like to try, which is um, having a, uh, a small Kubernetes uh, repo uh, that we import. It's not really Kubernetes. What it is is all the replaces stuck into a Go mod, and that's all it is. Uh, that way we can, if we try to include it in, will will that uh, force the uh, the go modules to properly load properly because uh, if, if it can if it does this you know it this will it won't solve the problem of it downloading all of kubernetes but it will solve the problem of keeping them all aligned across multiple repos so uh, just something to something to think about mm -hmm. okay cool Okay, that's all I have. Cool. All right, so moving on to the in-progress stuff, I, we're tantalizingly close on security. So Andre, um, I'm sorry, Ilya, I think you, you've got just a little bit of stuff to rebase and, and then we hopefully are relatively good to go. Oh yeah, already rebased and waiting for some good results. Okay, so CI is running. And then we've got some more things coming um, as we move along um, on the uh, security stuff. Um, SRV6, so um, Artem, I think you, you have a little bit of a blocker there on a bug in VPP, is that correct? Artem, do we have Artem on the call? We don't have Artem on the call. Okay, so when I last spoke to Artem, he was saying there's apparently a bug in VPP on deleting SRV6 SIDs, and that's sort of the last blocking piece on the SRV6 support. So we're working with the VPP team to that resolve. Is it in VPP or Legato? Uh, we think it's in VPP. Um, don't get me wrong. We, we found some bugs in Legato that, that got shaken out as well. And Legato team has been wonderful. And the VPP team is being wonderful about engaging to sort this, these things out. Um, so we're, we're just relatively more dynamic than so many. Okay. So. Cool. I'm quite happy. Well, you'll be happier. You'll be happier when we actually get the bugs fixed. <laughs> um, so, and, and, and then you can tell us all the things we've done wrong, Daniel, because I'm sure there will be a list. Um, oh, I don't know. I'm actually following it pretty closely. Uh, uh, we're working on this in other angles with VP and how to make it one. No, no, I, I understand that, Daniel, but, but, but no one actually fully envisions what they need until they try and use it, and then they discover all the little things. Oh, yes, I'm, I'm stuck in that right now. <laughs> <laughs> so we appreciate them. Um, okay, so we, we do have a discussion that's still ongoing about moving, moving some of the remote mechanism stuff around VNI selection into the NSM forwarder from the Network Service Manager. I think everybody agrees it's kind of a good idea. It's just a matter of sort of working out exactly what we want to do and when and how. And there's some refactoring going on in the data plane that hopefully will make that simpler. Um, so do we have Radoslav? Do you want to say some things, Radoslav, about the kernel forwarding plane? He's actually on PTTO this week. Okay. Oh, that's excellent news. I'm always happy. Uh, but uh, I know a bit because I'm using uh, his metrics implementation. So he still has a work in progress PR. And I'm not sure if it's uh, ready. He, he left it as uh, whip before he left, but uh, he pushed uh, some fixes and changes. It seems to me that it's uh, close to end. That's awesome news. That's awesome news. Because I'm, I'm very excited about the metric stuff, which is you're up next for on the list. Um, 
you want to say a few things about the metric work, Ivana, or? Uh, yes, I'm currently stepping uh, Prometheus server on the cluster, and uh, I have I wrote the other implementation for tracking metrics in Prometheus, and now mm -hmm. I'm uh, setting up the server to test all of that. Uh, and uh, regarding the VPP issue, I think you have seen the issue that uh, Dennis opened in Ligatus repo. Mm -hmm. uh, they agreed uh, with uh, having uh, configurable metrics, uh, configurable in periods, mm -hmm. I mean. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think uh, from what they replied uh, that they are going to implement it. I don't know if it's something that mm -hmm. You should so, submit. It's my, this is my impression that they said they're going to. Yeah, it, it, it sounds like they are going to implement it. And I think some of the initial confusion was VPP is able to collect metrics at a speed that almost no system is able to consume them. And, <laughs> and, and so they, when, when, what they thought we were asking, which was every time you update your metrics, would you send us a gRPC message? Like they, sometimes people ask for things you're like, I don't think you really want that um, <laughs> because they collect metrics so fast and so many metrics. And we sort of said, hey, how about just every so often you give us a summary? That made a lot more sense to them. So, because they, they, they can literally, they can throw off unbelievable, they, they throw off so, many, so much metric that they're actually innovations in DPP to make it possible to make them more consumable that way. So rather than providing metric events, um, they actually will allow you to share memory where they will update metrics because it's the only way you can possibly team up. But obviously that's not what we're gonna wanna do here. They're, we're just gonna add some gRPC messages. So that's actually also very good news. Um, Shared memory gRPC messages is what we need. Yeah, I'm, so. I'm, I'm, I'm not so sure about that, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Um, cool, so refactoring to simplify. So do you wanna say a few words, Andre? I know you're starting the chain refact chaining refactoring of the network service manager. Yeah, it's in progress. But uh, I think we'll need more time uh, since uh, it's quite complicated. Uh, I need to split uh, all requests and close into two separate hierarchies for local and for remote. Uh, so just trying to make all things easier. Um, so the other one I actually want to make sure we capture here is that we actually have a pull request out for refactoring the VPP agent data plane into sort of a more chaining style as well. Let me go ahead. Um, and that's our number. Uh, 1569. So essentially doing a similar kind of thing to refactor the data plane in the hope of making it much simpler to work with and also hopefully making it easier for various people to build their own data plane with or without VPP agent. Um, because I expect, I mean, you guys have done a great job on the kernel forwarding plane, that's a great step forward. But I suspect particularly as we start looking at hardware NIC support where the hardware NICs may have special features, we're gonna have a lot of people running to write their own NSM forwarders for a variety of reasons and we want that to be as easy as it can be. So, cool. Are there other things that people are aware of that are in progress right now? Well, I got a uh, question uh, for the kernel porting plane. Uh, are we using uh, IP tables uh, or uh, uh, any no. related uh, machinery in that? No, no. Okay, cool. Because there, there was a tweet that was put out by Tim Hawken about the shift from um, uh, do, do, do you recall what the what the shift was, uh, Ed? Uh, I can uh, just read the tweet out. It was from IP tables to whatever was coming after IP tables. Um, I'm trying to remember which thing it was. I mean, it's part of the progression where they keep thinking they're going to solve their performance problems. I'm sorry, what? So uh, NS, NS tables, I think. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So I just wanted to make sure that was on on all of your radar because it has a, there's an unstable API at this moment that is breaking things. So okay. if we're relying on any of that, uh, it's just best to keep that in mind. So. Yeah. 
Awesome. So that, anything else that folks wanted to bring up for in progress this week? Cool. Um, there were a couple things that I came across I, I wanted to discuss past sort of in progress things. One is we just had someone who opened an issue um, saying, hey, I went to go try and get the latest of this thing and we don't and you don't have it yet. And what I realized when I went to go look at that is in our production repos, um, we have a tag for the branch, like a tag master. We do not have a released version 0 0.1 of any, of any of our stuff as a tag anywhere I looked. So did that not get taken care of when we did the 0 0.1 release? Hello? So who did the release mechanics? I was on vacation that week for 0 0.1. There should be tags or have them. I probably didn't push them. About yeah, I, I went and I looked for them, for example, like on um, NSM init. I'm um, not sure you're able to release without a tag, but OK. Yeah, so um, when I went to go look at tags for um, NSM init, let me go ahead and. Oh, damn. So this. a question on this. Is, is this get the uh, get tags or Docker tags? Docker tags. Uh, okay, how how is this possible? Yeah, so we're we're missing that um, was the first thing I noticed, and then the second thing I noticed is that uh, we're missing latest tags for everything as well. Well, we agreed that there are no latest tags. Well, I I. I I don't recall the full content of that conversation, um, but I thought that we were going to have a, a branch tag and then a release version and then a latest tag that pointed to the most recent release. No, we have ma master tag. Right, right. For, for the ongoing ah. continuous release of things for master branch. But my point is, if we've got a version 0 0.1 release, I thought we were going to have a latest that pointed to the most recent release version. Does that make sense? Yeah. I I think Docker, we need um, we need a latest one because uh, if you do Docker pull NSM init or or NSM or so on, then it's going to default to to latest, and that should go to the latest uh, release. Yeah. So, so, it's, eh. yeah. so I, I think we should uh, I, I think we should change that particular policy and just make sure that we have a, a latest tag. Yeah, I, I think we still um, have it, a tag because. We want to be able to get whatever is most recent on master, but latest shouldn't point to the head of master. That way lies madness. Yeah. So, okay, so the, the question is, who wants to pick up getting the 0 0.1 tags pushed and the latest tags pushed pointing to the 0 0.1 for the stuff that from the 0 0.1 release? Uh, that uh, would be me, I guess. Uh, that is much appreciated. I, I know it's not a fun job. Um, but it is much appreciated. Just can can get it how how come the things are not there? That's that's the only thing. I, I don't understand particularly what happened there with mechanics. Um, but I did want to sort of bring attention to it when you get it fixed. So, and then anything else on the tagging stuff? There. So I see that for some of the containers there is. Uh, oh, obviously. okay. But some of them there isn't? Yeah. Okay, so it's good to know that, that, that it's there for some, not necessarily for others. So we should definitely get it fixed for the ones that it doesn't We should um, see here. We should also uh, watch it on occasion just to make sure we don't have an overly aggressive script that, um, that cleans things. Uh, also, uh, are you sure we have NSM in it in the in the zero dot one? Because I'm not sure that there is NSM in it there. Oh, that may be true. I, I maybe I may be that rename may have taken place later than longer ago than I thought. Um, that that's also a possibility. Um, because all the Helm charts when you download them, that's explicitly tested. They download images on a clean Docker uh, local cache. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So here's the thing that I'm seeing. So I know one that hasn't changed names in a long time, which is NSC. Um, yeah, yeah. Okay, NSC has both the B01 and it has the latest. Yeah. 
Okay, so I may have misunderstood because I thought the NS eminent change was more recent. Um, well, latest that. latest is three months old when we stopped using latest in the in the main. Uh, got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Yeah, I for some reason that that it, I, I apologize that I created undue confusion. Um, no, there's no. I mean. <laughs> It's always good to revisit. <laughs> and that's I was a bit like uh, I remember pushing all these things and testing five times. Right. Well, this this is why <laughs> you sort of asked the question because. Um, good. Okay. The other thing I'm actually sort of periodically cleaning up a little bit is um, we have a few remaining CI tags running loose in some of these repos. Yeah. And it's just because the switchover like things on older places, blah blah blah. So and I'm just deleting those as I come across them. They're not many. Um, so, okay, good. I'm glad to know that I was I'm delighted to be having been sounding a false alarm there. All right, cool. So um, then the other one I wanted to bring up was, and this is just purely for discussion at this moment, is somebody, you know, Andre pointed out with the switch to mechanism type being from enum to string, we might be able to collapse the local and remote versions of the APIs to a single API. Mm -hmm. um, Perfect. And that that you know that there's some things to work out there around things like how to properly limit the local remote mechanisms to the proper context, because for example, it makes no sense to allow a pod to ask its local network service manager for an SRV6 uh, connection because like there's no way to represent that to the pod, right? The pod can only be represented local things, but I think that's probably solvable. Um, but I, I I take it from your comment, Nikolai. This sounds like a good idea to you in general. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think that we have discussed this already. I mean, has anything changed fundamentally? I didn't remember discussing this before. Um, uh, maybe maybe I'm, I'm just having a senior moment. That happens to me sometimes. So. Okay, but I mean, does, okay. that, does that sound like a good goal for people? I mean, there's some details to be worked out. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, but yeah, it sounds it sounds like a good one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it, it should hopefully simplify a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Sim simplification is always a good. good yeah, thing. I, I I also like it, it warms the cockles of my heart that we're likely simpler <laughs> as we get more feature rich. It just makes me happy. Yeah. So, all right, cool. Anything? I guess this is your line, Frederick. <laughs> <laughs> Cool. Yeah. There. Uh, let's see. Is there anything else that anyone would like to discuss? Okay. Um, I'll remind people that we have until next uh, week's NSM call to work out if we're going to have a call during ONS. So uh, for those um, for those of you that are going to Actually, what we'll do, I think, is next week we'll, we'll ask uh, we'll ask how many people will be uh, will be around, and if we have enough people, then uh, I will uh, leave that to uh, to Ed to organize. And um, but um, does, does does that sound like a good plan? This. Uh... I actually just figured out that, that, that I have a question. Do you want to just cancel these meetings that are not that haven't happened for the last couple of months? Uh, because they're just sitting there and we keep repeating that they are on break, but yeah, it's September already and... Uh, yeah, I would say that we probably want to go check with the guys who organized them and say, look, you know, are you going to be bringing these back? If not, we're going to cancel them in sort of a friendly, polite sort of way. Yeah. I think that's a good idea, and uh, part of it is like uh, is, uh, Jeffrey as an example. So Jeffrey, Jeffrey was out uh, for uh, some other things that he needed to to take care of, and so he's back now. So he he may have intentions of uh, of doing some more things. So I don't, I'm not comfortable just outright canceling them at this point without having a good discussion with them. Uh, but yeah, we we definitely need to to reach out, and it's okay, it's okay as well, like to to put them on, on hiatus, but if they're going to be on hiatus for longer than some period of time, then we should probably uh, remove them from the calendar. And that doesn't mean that they're gone forever. It just means 
because we can always start them up again as as needed. But uh, yeah, let's let's reach out to see is Jeffrey on the call. I'm not seeing him on the call, so let's reach out to Jeffrey and let's reach out to uh, to uh, Romke and uh, see if Brent on the call. Yeah, yeah. So let's reach out to them and ask. Okay. Cool. Is there anything else that anyone would like to discuss? Right. Cool. With that, uh, you'll yield back some time. And uh, thank you all for attending. And we will see you all again next week. Take care. Cheers. Bye. Bye. Bye.